Welcome back, it's the Clay Golem here. We're back in Foundry VTT. We are continuing building our Fandelva and below the Shattered Obelisk. Uh, in the last video, uh, we got distracted by looking at a couple of uh, different DM tools that we can use. Uh, but in the last video of this series, we were building the ruins of Thunder Tree. And we got as far as completing the, uh, the westernmost cottage up here, um, the blighted cottages, we did the brown horse, not the brown house, uh, and we did druid's watch post. So we want to continue on that vein. Um, and so let's put in a couple of our extra, remember we're going map locations, not class summary, inability to click, which is excellent. Um, so what are our, our next map locations going to be? Uh, we need to do the blighted farmhouse which is excellent, uh, and that is location uh, U5 we're up to, aren't we? Yes, good, got that. Uh, and that is this one just here. So let's shove that in there for the moment. We are also going to be covering the uh, ruined store, if I can spell <laughs> the ruined store. Just make sure that's a map location as well, create that. And this is going to be U six we'll come back and do the descriptions of it uh soon and uh, let's stick that one out that's for that one there uh and the other one that i want to make sure we cover in this video we might we might do more hopefully we'll do more depends how slow i am uh, is the old tower okay so map location create that and this is location u7 and for whatever reason in the order that they're putting them in that's the ruined tower up here. So these ones that we're going to do, uh, we're going to start off with number five down here. So we've got the uh, the module open in the other screen, as always, so we can see what it is. Uh, and it just talks a little bit about this ruined tower. Looks like it might once have been a farm farmhouse. So ruined tower, what am I on about? The blighted farmhouse. Um, it's now half swallowed by dense thicket. Trees grow through. It's basically not a lot here. The thicket uh, east of this ruin uh, the thicket east of this ruin is crawling with 12 twig blights and two needle blights. So that's going to be this thicket just over here where we're looking. So let's shove those out immediately. Okay. Uh, now, oh, I know what I was going to do. It's just easier to do rather than updating them all. Let's pick one of these. Copy, paste. There it is. And we can shove that out over here, nice and easy. Oh, I haven't got token ease on. Remember, we looked at token ease, which makes it nice and quick and easy to move these around. Perhaps I should do that. So I'm just doing Control V here to slap them all out. How many did it say? Twelve of them. So what we got? Uh, we have got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. I mean, that's quite a lot, isn't it? And two needle blights. So let's shove those out as well. Uh, did we put needle blights out already? We created them, but I wasn't sure if we actually placed any. I don't think we did. They're new. Uh, so where's our needle blights? I just had them. Muppetry. Here we go. There's our needle blights. Uh, so these are slightly smaller, these twig blights. These ones are a bit bigger. Now, again, that says shambling mounds. So let's double, double right click and just make sure that it says needle blight now again i don't have it so that um, the players can see that but um, um, you know i don't need to change it players can't see the name but uh, yeah otherwise it's going to drive me nuts uh, and there's two of those so let's uh, control c control v now we've got two of those and all we need to do is decide how we're going to range these so um, they can be re reasonably randomly uh, spread around here However we like. Perhaps put a couple down here around the base of this tree. Okay, so that will do. Um, and it says, uh, da, 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 any disturbance to the ruined farmhouse, for example, the characters looting around the rubble, draws the blight's ire. Uh, each round for three rounds, two twig blights head for the south doorway. Uh, so this bit just here. Um, the needle blight follows on round three. Uh, each one move. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, two more head to the north doorway. Okay, so we're going to have some head this way, some head up that way. Okay, um, and they're basically going to try and surround them. But that's fine. We'll deal with that as we get to it. 
Uh, so all I need to do for this one, because it's not particularly exciting, um, let's just update this. Let's do a copy and paste and shove that in there. Again, I'm just going to make it bold because it's a description, helps it stand out. And we can stick that in there. Uh, and I'm just going to copy and paste that bit straight from the module. Just a reminder, this is a module that I own, so I'm not uh, not trespassing on any um, copyright or anything like that. I own this, I'm allowed to use it. And that's all, all good. Uh, and I own it through D&D Beyond, just in case you've jumped in partway through and you haven't kept up with other bits, which is fine. You can always go back and watch the other videos. Um, next one, Ruin Store. So this is um, an intersection at an intersection. Let's open this up. Let's pop this bit in. Okay, so at an inter intersection, uh, bold it, thank you. Um, near the middle of the village, a narrow lane winds up a steep hillside to the north. Directly to the south is a ruined building that might have seen might have been a store or a workshop. Webs stretch across the lane from the building to the trees on the north side of the road. So from the building to the trees. So that's kind of this this kind of area here, something like that. Um, and then the description goes on to say about the uh, former general store isn't a complete ruin yet. Uh, portions of its roof, roof remain intact, but two giant spiders are lurking in the building. So let's copy this stuff across. There's also treasure here. So I'm gonna copy the whole thing, um, put my line in, just so it helps to break things up a bit. And then I can highlight the whole lot here and just remove that formatting. Uh, I think I missed a bit off the end. Just remove that formatting, just so it all looks a bit nicer. Um, and we potentially got, we've got, we got a roll in here. Spiders make perception. Okay, so bracket, bracket, backslash. And this is a skill check um, where the ability equals wisdom. The skill is perception, DC 17 close brackets there we go to avoid being surprised absolutely fine uh, whoops so daisy uh, and then we've got a little bit that talks about the webs so I'm going to bold that just so it helps stand out for us uh, and it talks about DC athletics check um, so let's put that in just because we can so this is a skill check ability is oops is Strength um, and the skill is athletics DC eight. Get rid of the rest of that word. We don't need it. Um, or have the restrained condition as the web snares it. A restrained creature can again attempt to make. Whoops, rubbish highlighting skills. So restrained creature uh, can take an action each round. Make a Again, uh, DC uh, 8 uh, athletics check uh, to break free. Yep, good. Um, duh, 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 duh. The webs have AC 10 uh, and up to 10 hit points, which is good. Vulnerable to fire, all easy peasy. Going around the webs is difficult because of the thickets um, on the north side of the road. Going around the building to the south leads into twig blights of area five, which is what we were just talking about just down here where we've put those twig blights out, which is good. Uh, we have got a treasure thing here. Uh, my mouse is doing some weird things. Can my mouse behave? Yep, some, doing something a bit odd. There we go. So let's just bold that so that we know about it. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm going to give it a an extra line under there just to help break that up. All right, so we've got some things there. Now, I can obviously drag and drop some stuff here, or we can create. So this talks about unfortunate adventurer lies cocooned uh, in spider silk. All right, so I'm going to close this. Um, so we've got this already out here, and we've got this. I'm going to just move this. Let's get rid of that for a moment. Uh, whoops. Go to our journal. Let's move this outside to make sure that we're not waiting for them to get into the building. It's like, oh yeah, because we're going to have spiders here. Now it does talk about these giant spiders. Um, 
what did it say about them? It said, two giant spiders are lurk in the building, hiding behind the walls. So let's go to our monsters. We've got giant spiders in there somewhere. Here we go. Slap them in. Um, I mean, they're large, aren't they? Yeah, they're large creatures. So let's slap this one in here. Just, you know, chilling out, hiding away here. Um, and we might stick the other one here as they're just chilling out in the top corners of that particular part of the building. That's fine. Don't have a problem with that. All right. Uh, maybe I'll move one over there. Let's move one over there. Whatever. Okie dokie. So we kind of got that in place. That's quite nice and easy. Now that's a bit of a descriptor. We could find some icons to put some webs in and here and things, um, which is no drama. Um, I want to do treasure. So if we grab, so what was the treasure? Uh, couple of different things here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Pierce through mail elf. The corpse wears a plus one leather armor. So let's see if we can find that. Let's go to the SRD. We can go to our items. Uh, items here. We can go to armor. And if we type in leather, we can find plus one leather armor. And we can just dump that on here. And it creates our item pile for us. We get rid of the SRD for a moment. All right. So this is going to be our item pile. I'm going to double right click on this. Um, I'm going to call this Cocooned Elf. Okay, just so that we know that it is indeed a Cocooned Elf and it is dead. Um, I am going to, on its appearance, I'm going to change its image. Uh, I want to go to User Data, go into My Folder, I'm going to go to Items and I'm going to choose one and it's not in there. Where did I pop it? If I was smart, I popped it in here. Yeah, I'm going to use that icon for it. Boom. Okay, so that's not great. I, was, I thought that was a PNG. It's clearly not. I will change that. Now I'm going to stick that over in this corner. It's going to start off hidden. If it will let me select it. Oh, I've got that weird thing. Yeah, it did this before. Um, where for some reason it decided to... Uh... Yeah, there we go. For some reason, Foundry just got his knickers in a twist a bit, and it didn't want to uh, didn't want to work. But there it does. Excuse that little blur there, just while I sorted that out. Um, not a big issue. Didn't need to restart or anything. It just uh, went a bit funny. So I can hide that. But this is remember this is an item pile. So I need to add the other things into here. So plus one leather armor, a short sword. So I'll bring up that items SRD again. Uh, we can easily go um, short sword. It was a normal short sword. Nothing particularly special in there. Um, with a um, oh, and a short sword. Yep. Uh, it also a potion of healing in a belt pouch with 23. So let's add some currency here. 23 gold uh, and 35 silver. Okay, good. Um, and we need that potion of healing. A potion of healing and we dump that in there as well brilliant so we've got that item pile ready to go um, and the players will be, I need to go to configure pile um, because I can have it as an item pile or I can have it as a container I think I will have it as a container I can just leave it as an item pile and leave it invisible it's not a merchant it's not a chest so I don't need to have it as a container they can just raid the body that's fine item pile is fine for this purpose um, it's not that they're not going to be picking up the whole content. They're not going <laughs> to. We could strip the elf, or we could just take the elf as he is and then take his stuff off when we want to sell it. That's not what they're going to do, is it? Um, <clears throat> so we need to just check some of these things. So we don't need a macro in there. Uh, delete when empty. Yes, we can just get rid of it once they've picked the bits up. That's no problem. Happy with that. That should work fine. Just update that. Yep, and then we can get rid of it. Okay, good. Uh, so there we go. That's our treasure. Yeah, the icon is not as good as I wanted it to be. But to be honest, it's not that big a deal. It's not until they search they're going to go, oh, find it. They're going to nick all the stuff. It's going to disappear anyway. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, but before we move on to the one up there, we do need to do a couple of bits like, for example, uh, get rid of the SRD. We need to put walls in for these. So just like before, um, where it's pretty much shows walls, I'm going to put walls in. Uh, and where it doesn't, oops, I'm going to just leave it blank. 
so they can literally see through those gaps. That's it. Nice and easy. I don't need to put any light or anything in there because this place is ruined so we haven't got general lighting um, which makes this scene actually really easy to do from a walls and stuff point of view. Um, and again, because it's ruined, we don't really need to do any uh, any other effects. Now, it might be nice to find some effects like um, wind and things like that. You know, nothing else is going on. There's, you could just hear the wind in the background. Uh, and I mentioned before, one of the things that we've got in missing on a number of our maps is some extra atmospheric sound. Yeah, we've got some campfires. Um, we've got some dripping water. Um, but a lot of our maps haven't got anything at all. And it might be nice to jazz them up a bit. Okay, so let's move up to the old tower here. So at the top of the hill stands a round tower with a cottage attached. Uh, both are in relatively good condition. Why am I reading that out to you? Because what we should be doing at this point is going back into the Thunder Tree Journal, going to the old tower and editing this um, and popping this stuff straight in there, ready for action. So let's dump that in. Uh, whoops, I missed the A off at the top of the tower, blah, 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 blah. And make that bold, because that's a reedy outy bit. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologize. Uh, so at the top of the hill stands a round tower with a cottage attached, both in relatively good condition, although half of the roofs of the tower's roof is gone. Door leads into the cottage. Several arrow slit, arrow slit windows are visible in the tower. You notice an eerie quiet in the area and a strange acrid smell in the air. Uh, the corpses of two giant spiders sprawl near the edge of the pathway, apparently dragged um, apparently dragged there. Their bloated bodies are puckered and blistered and appear to have been mauled by a large animal. Now, I just need to reset the, um, the formatting there to make sure. There we go. Just so it wraps properly. So we've got a couple of corpses of giant spiders. We could choose not to bother putting them on or we could put them on just for the characters to look at and make it a bit more obvious. Um, and we've got a little bit of background here we can put in. Uh, it's formerly the home of a human wizard. Do the characters ever need to know that? Let's copy and paste all of the rest of this. This is a significant um, uh, encounter area for this map. So again, let's remove everything, make sure it wraps properly. Okay, so we have just a little bit of fiddling. Um, so the tower is formerly home to a human wizard, blah, blah, blah. A young green dragon named Venom Fang. Okay, so we need to make sure we've got Venom Fang ready to go. Uh, and I haven't got it here, but I have got uh, this dude. So here's a young green dragon called Venom Fang. So let's update that. Um, I'm going to leave that image as it is. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. Um, let's upload from my computer. Uh, and I'm using going to use this image here. Now, just to point out, this is I've this is one I've got from DeviantArt. Uh, so it's not mine. Um, but it is under Creative Commons license. So I am allowed to use it as long as I tell you that this is by somebody called uh, Azani, A-Z-A-N-Y. Um, available on DeviantArt. Um, so under Creative Commons, I absolutely can use that as long as I tell you where I got it. And I just did. So that's all lovely jubbly. Um, and very much appreciate artists who allow us to do that, um, you know, and actually show off their work and use it. Um, yeah, it's a shame it's a little bit narrow, but that's okay. The character's going to be too busy crapping their pants <laughs> to worry too much about the icons. Not perfect. Uh, and it's only a representation. Okay, so uh, I just want to check in the stat block uh, that I've got in the other screen. Just want to check that these stats are matching with what we want. Um, because we've got the module dragon and then we've got the stat block dragon that comes from the SRD. They should, in theory, match. But we do get changes and updates and things. Um, so we want to make sure features wise we've got bite and claw attack, uh, multi attack, poison breath, um, uh, and amphibious. Yes, amphibious. Yep, good. That's all there. Um, and those attributes are all good. And they should be looking at 136 hit points, being a CR8. 
So this is a challenging creature for them to get into a bundle with. Um, and they probably shouldn't. <laughs> but they will. <laughs> Somebody will. Um, somebody pointed out that if I just uh, hang over that, um, if sorry, if I if I highlight it, it drops this over, and I can no, that's not quite the way. If I've got it highlighted, I can do it this way as well anyway, um, and that should just replace the word venom fang. So slightly quicker way to do it. Um, again, you guys have been dropping in all sorts of little hints and stuff that just make life slightly easier. Um, than before just little little shortcuts everything that saves time is good um, so again where it says venom fang rather than I normally drop it in and then delete venom fang but of course I can just do that just drop it straight in over the top it deletes what I've got highlighted and places it straight in so yeah it's not a huge time saver but it makes a bit of a difference okay so this young green dragon venom fang recently claimed the tower having passed over thunder tree while searching neverwinter wood for a suitable lair giant spider corpse of the clearing former residents of the tower that he ate um since then the dragon has been lying low okay so we've got the tower let's make that bold so it stands out and we can see that we're talking slightly different it's almost like separating the paragraphs out it just makes it easier to find in the heat of the moment so the dragon lives in the tower, a single room, 40 foot ceiling, ceiling, blah, 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 blah. Heavy wooden wooden beams and stairs support it. Venom Fang doesn't want to give up such a promising lair, but if the characters reduce him to a quarter of his hit points, he climbs to the top of the tower and flies off. Just to really annoy them when they think, yeah, we've got him. He buggers off. And he will come back. At least I tend to do that. Significant enemies especially powerful ones, um, they don't tend to forget. Um, and they will come back after the characters at another point, potentially. All right, so the cottage. Uh, the cottage remains dusty. Uh, sorry, the cottage contains dusty furniture draped in webbing, but nothing of value. Hurrah. Uh, if the characters make a lot of noise in the cottage, the dragon hears them and prepares for a fight. Okay. Uh, and then we've got the treasure. So we're going to do the same again. We've got our um, our item piles now, so it makes it nice and easy for us to do treasure, which is lovely. A broken wooden chest. So we wanted to use a container for that with a whole bunch of coins in it, etc., etc. Uh, Venom fan spends hours each day greedily, greedily admiring his loot. The dragon has barely noticed the most interesting item in its hoard. Lying beneath the coins is a rusty old battle axe of dwarven manufacture. Ruins spell out Hugh in dwarvish on the axe. Uh, and the rust is misleading. Hugh is a plus one battle axe that deals maximum damage when the wielder attacks a plant creature or an object made of wood. Uh, the axe's creator used it for protection in the forest while he cut firewood. So that's a really interesting item. Uh, and that's not one that exists in the module. Uh, sorry, that exists um, normally. So we may need to design that particular weapon to put in this um, this horde, which is yeah good. Something new that we haven't done yet is designing a very specific piece of treasure. Uh, just to um, quickly show you, I think we've got. Uh, so just again, bringing over the adventure just from the other window, it talks about Hue, uh, plus one battle axe here, and it's got um, notes, bonus, it does magic damage, it's combat versatile, all those normal things, but it gives you this extra damage versus plants, so max damage versus plants. So uh, we'll have to work out exactly how we build that, which is great. We like those. We like things that make us um, push ourselves a little bit further than we were before. All right, now where exactly was that treasure? A broken wooden chest in the tower. So I need to go back to my SRD. I'm going to open my items. Um, I want to find, it's going to be, so what was it? Uh, moonstones. Now I don't think there was moonstones in here, but I think I created them as items over here, possibly. A moonstone key. No, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my agate here. Uh, I can duplicate it, open this up, and again I, I really could go through and update all of these with new pictures and things, I've just not got around to it. 
So it talks about um, a treasure chest with all these coins, four silver goblets set with... Ah, oh, wrong. These were silver goblets. I'm going to call them Moonstone Goblets. Uh, and then under the description, I'm going to put... Uh, da, 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 silver goblet set with Moonstone. of a goblet set with moonstones like that lovely um i can do that uh oh i didn't update prices and stuff silly boy uh moonstone goblets gonna be under m now um i don't want to change that oh it does this to me uh, details uh, where's my other option <laughs> oh, and i don't yes i'm done with that thank you very much how do i go how strange Go back. Give me the... No, don't change the image. Give me back the configure. Yeah, that's the... Hmm. How strange. Why can't I get back to the other properties? Yes, gemstone, that's fine. Oh, well, it's not gemstone. We just call it... Uh, art object. There we go. We can call it that. Uh, I've got my details. I've got my description. Um, but how do I get back to my original tab? It's gone. Right click, configure ownership. Yep, don't need to worry about that. Um, how bizarre. Why has it done that? Anybody anybody know? Anybody know why I can't go back to that previous page? That's a bit weird. Uh, escape just literally takes me... Oh, it takes me nowhere right now. It's highlighting this. Uh, that's, that's done. I'll finish with it. <laughs> how strange. Have we had this before? That's item macro. Don't need that. We need the sheet is yeah. The sheet is a sheet, um, and there's only the normal sheet item there anyway. Oops, get rid of that. Uh, we don't need automated animations on it. We don't need to configure it for the item itself. Uh, we don't need DAE. We don't need this. We've got no. How really weird. Let's duplicate it. You, sometimes you get these weird little things. There we go. Now it's taking me back to the description with these other options. How strange. Right, the previous one, I'm just going to delete it. And I'm just going to rename this one. That's the quickest and easiest way to solve that little problem. Okay, these are worth 60 gold each. Sorry about that. The little glitches do we encounter. Um, but sometimes it's just easier to duplicate it and get rid of the one that's not working than it is to spend hours trying to fix it. So, uh, yeah, so worth 60 gold each. Happy with that. Uh, the details, it's an art object, it's not magical, that's fine. Back at description, lovely jubbly. Uh, good, right, going to close that. And I'm going to use that Moonstone Goblet uh, and dump it down here to create my pile. Uh, I've dumped it slightly in the wrong place, but that's okay. Uh, so this is a... Oh. Yeah, here we go. So I can left-click this Moonstone Goblets. How many was there? There's actually four of them, which is good. And we can add that money on. Copper pieces. Uh, 2,100. And then we've got 130 gold. Okay, so... And then we've got the four silver goblets, which we've already just added. A spell scroll of Misty Step. So we can go to our spells. We can search for Misty Step. Dump that in. And because we're copying the spell straight from here, it's automatically creating as a scroll spell, which is bloody lovely. Um... And we've got lightning bolt as well. Scroll with lightning bolt. Okay, so it's a nice little thing. And then we've got this battle axe called Hue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my items. Um, I'm going to find a battle axe plus one. I'm going to drag... Actually, I've already got a battle axe plus one over here. So what I'm going to do is open this... And I'm going to call this Hue. Uh, and then we're going to update this. Now, I've not done this, so uh, I'm going to give it a go while we're right here. And if I get stuck, then we'll come back and do it uh, another time. Uh, so details for this. We've got description. Uh, under details, um, what I want to do is to be able to say, well, hang on, under certain conditions, i.e. enemy equals plant, do maximum damage. And that's the bit I do not necessarily know. So... 
this formula, other formula, is going to be basically max damage, which is either going to be um, 8 plus the mod plus 1, or it's going to be 10 plus the mod plus 1. But that will depend upon target type. And that's the bit I don't know. Uh, passive effects and things. Do you know what? I'm not going to spend ages doing this now. It might be one I need to look up. Or if I'm really smart, it's going to be one that I say, Hey guys, do any of you know how to do this? <laughs> do you, I mean, I, obviously we're happy to use mods, but there's probably a really easy way to do this. So if any, any of you got any tips, chuck it down in the comments. That would be really useful. Uh, and then we can just crack on and I can share that with other people rather than you watching me just mess around for ages getting it wrong and frustrating you people who actually know what you're doing with it. Uh, so we're going to snap those things in there. So knowing that we need to update Hue uh, later and give it some properties. Um, but we want to configure this pile and we want to make this actually a container um, that is going to be closed. Uh, or oh, is it? It does say it's a broken wooden chest. So it's not going to be closed. It's going to be open. Um, so let's pick a, let's go to our core data. Uh, let's go to our icons. Let's go to containers. Let's go to, um, it does say a chest, doesn't it? I mean, we can choose whatever the hell we like, really. It doesn't matter. Um, simple, 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 simple. It's just one, you know, chest, worn, oak, tan. What does that look like? Let's choose that one. That'll do. That'll do for now. Um, so that was bottom one here. Just so that's always going to be there regardless of whether they've emptied it or not. That's fine. It's not closed. It's not locked. It is enabled. They can look at the stuff in there. Um, they can ransack it. Don't delete it when it's empty because it's a, it's a chest. Um, that's fine. The chances are they're not going to take it with them. Right, happy with that. I love the way you can close lid. <laughs> All right, update the item pile. Good. Done. Uh, so that's good. It's, it says in the tower. Let's stick it in the tower. Uh, and I'm not going to hide that one. Uh, I do want to change that name of it, though. Um, broken old chest. Because that might be the thing that when they come in and searching around this place, they may not, possibly may not notice the dragon if it's, I don't know, somewhere else. Um, but they're gonna, it's going to be quite obvious if they get this far that it's here. Um, and it's probably going to encourage them to come and be naughty and try and dove in the dragon. All right, so apart from that, let's build these walls around here. We're going to keep those doors as functioning doors because they appear to be functioning doors. Okay, and then we want to, well, we want to attempt to build these walls around here as well. Now, I know this is not hugely well curved. We can adjust that in a moment. So we're just going to stick that in there. Uh, and with this, this one, I'm going to bring that in. Uh, just bring that into there, to be honest. That's fine. Uh, now, again, I can move these. They do like to snap, but if I hold down shift, um, I can place them much more accurately than where they were. So where we've got a janky bit of wall like this, it's, it doesn't look great. Didn't want to do that, though, did I? <laughs> Stop it. Just want to move that bit there. And drop it. And then I just want to move this bit there. And Pop it on that one, please. Oh, it's going to do that. Right. Come on. A little bit fiddly, but not too bad. All right, I'm happy with that. It's good enough. I might just move this one out here. I don't want to be too pedantic about it. Forgot to hold shift, so there we go. I can drop that. Uh, brilliant. This is a door. Double click, door configuration. It is a door. Um, and it's going to be closed. That's fine. Double click this one. It's a door. I'm going to put a sound on this one. And I'm going to make this heavy creaky. Or oh, sorry, this one just wood creaky. Uh, that's fine. And I'm going to make this one heavy wood. 
just so they've got a little bit of sound difference there. All right, so that will stop them from being able to just peer through the walls and see the treasure chest and things. The only thing I need to do now for this one, apart from update that hue, is to chuck this in here. Um, what I do want to do, did I have a, did I have Haley out here somewhere? I did. Let's check what, I just want to see. So if Haley walks around the back here, because this is really quite important that Haley or any character walking around here, we cannot see the dragon. We've got a little gap in our wall there though. You can see that. If I just zoom in. That, that clearly shouldn't be able to see in the tower. So let's just make sure it's just where I've, yeah, it's where these, these two nodes here aren't locked into each other. So that should be an improvement. So I'm just going to reset the fog of war there. Grab Haley again. Move her around the building. There we go. Now we can't accidentally see into the room. There's a tiny little bit down here again. Yeah, that that might be a little bit of a giveaway. Again, we can we can fix that just by making sure our wall pieces are tightly knitting together. And it it's it's not it's not a deal breaker, but it does there we go, that's better. It does kind of break the immersion, doesn't it? Um, you know, if they're wandering around and they go, Oh, I've walked past a wall and I X ray vision I can see something through it. It just spoils it a bit. Okay, uh, right, get off Haley. So we have another three areas done here. We've created some treasure, we've put some more monsters out um, and stuff. So what's left to do is uh, the old smithy, the herbalist shop, the town square, old garrison, weaver's cottage, and the dragon cultist cottage. So we've, got, we've done three areas in this one. Uh, we did four areas in the previous one. We've got six areas to go. We'll have to see how quickly we can... Uh, finish some of these things off what will make that slightly easier is I'm going to just put some extra walls in right now while we're here um, it'll just save a little bit of time in the next video you're just doing it now instead I'll be happy with myself that I did this when I get there um, just slapping these in and they don't take very long at all I mean, I'm saying that, you know, you're watching me do it. Of course I don't. <laughs> there we go from here to here to here to here to here to here. Well, this is exciting, isn't it? It's a little bit facetious. I uh, want that door in there. And then we want this one across here as well. Uh, let's just make sure that's a door. Make sure that one's a door. Make sure that one's a door. Excellent. No doors there. We need to make these two down here a door. Good. Uh, back up this one here. Let's get... Ugh. Didn't like the placement of that wall. Just drawing around. Not too worried about the fact that these aren't quite square. It's a ruin. That's fine with me. I'll stick some here as well. Lovely. Uh, and then we've just got a couple up here to do. And then we'll bring... Hello. We'll bring, we'll bring this video to a close. Uh, and in the next one, we'll just be able to finish off the last few bits here. Um, this is obviously a significant building. It looks like it's intact. I think this is where the cultists hang out. Uh, and then we want another one. There we go. So let's just make some doors here. And it might be we come back and just update these doors once we've read the descriptions and things. They might be particular types of doors. They might be locked, etc. 
but for now that's good enough right so we've got our main um, main antagonist in we've got the druid in we've got the dragon in we've got the cultists to do but we've done all the walls for these other bits um, and some of these I think are, are empty it's going to be mostly putting out twig blights um, and things like that and cultists in the next video um, so yeah just on Hugh if you've got any tips of good ways to handle setting up Hugh leave them in the comments uh, if you haven't that's fine we're working out um, it's my job to work it out to tell you guys it's just if you already know <laughs> I'm happy to share your wisdom rather than me fumbling through thanks guys take care I'll see you in the next one